Welcome back to How to Build an F-14 Tomcat. I've had to work over the past couple of days, so I haven't gotten as many videos or as much work in general done as I would have liked. But I'm kind of finishing up on the last bits of uh, the stabilizers, getting them to fit properly and all. I'm mixing up some body filler right now so I can show you guys how I get really tight fits of uh, well, pretty much anything. If you want hatches or control surfaces, whatever you need. So I got the body filler mixed up. I'm going to let it sit for just a minute or two. Here I've got our horizontal stabilizers. You see I've taped off the edges and I've left the root untaped except for here to tip which has already been finished. So what I do is I will take the body filler and I'm just going to put it here on the unfinished portion of the root. All of this has been hardened with thin CA just for the uh, before doing all this that way it's less chance of getting dinged up and all but there's still all this little last minute filling jobs just to make everything perfect and the reason I let this sit for just minutes just to give it a, a few seconds to just kind of harden up a little bit so it's a little less runny that way you can position it and not have to worry about it fall off the stab the, um, the aluminum litho sheets from the top and the bottom are just barely overlapping this root edge so that kind of gives you a, a little bit of a stop to where you want your your body filler to, to go to. It also kind of helps keep it in place once the, the stab gets put onto the fuselage. So you don't have to get this stuff on here perfect. You just want to make sure you get a nice even coverage. You don't want to have any pinholes or anything. That way you're not having to go back and do it a second time, but most of the time you'll end up having to do it two or three times just to get it perfect. You know, I'm kind of keeping this out of the video so y'all really can't see what I'm doing much but doing my best to get it in there All right, so that stuff's getting a little, starting to cure a little bit more now, so it's less runny. So what we'll do is we'll just take the stab and we'll just put it on the fuselage. And before I push it all the way up against it, and they take a nice little piece of tape that'll help me hold it nice and tight against the fuselage. So then what I'm gonna do is just push the stab where it's about neutral, right up against the stabilizer until the body filler kind of oozes out. Now I'll take the piece of tape I just made and I'll use that to help hold the stabilizer on the fuselage. And taking your spatula, just take some of this excess where it oozed out and put it to where you do, there's not quite enough where it didn't ooze out at the top very much. Now again, this is one of those things where it just kind of got to work at it a couple of times. I already did the other side once, and it didn't come out perfect, but that's why they make more body filler. And since these are plugs, you're not really worried too much about weight. You want fit and finish more than, than the weight of everything. So now we got the top done. Go along the bottom and just do the same thing. And this one actually fit, fair, fit much better to the fuselage than the other one. And you just want to make sure this tape won't move at all so it won't allow the stabilizer to move. Because the stabilizer moves, it's going to kind of move your body filler around on it. And what happens is when you don't get a nice tight fit, 
do it, you end up with what happened on the other side. You can see how it kind of, uh, well, you see what it did. Just doesn't look all that pretty. But I hit this down with some 60 grit paper just to knock it, knock it down, and I'll do it again, and off we'll go the second time around. Um, like I said, work's kept me busy the past couple of days with work. Darn that thing they call work. But uh, I did get some stuff in the mail today. The good old FedEx guys brought a whole bunch of goodies. So I figured I'd bring you guys in and let you look. I uh, actually got this stuff from a different place than where Bob told me to go. I know Bob got really good uh, service and prices from his people, but with the shipping and all, it was just gonna kill me going with the same people he got. So I actually found this company down in Atlanta, Georgia. It's called The Engineering Guy. I'll post the link up in the, uh, the comments section. Or not the comments, but the video, whatever. So you guys can go. The uh, your website's a little off on the shipping content on this stuff. When I went to check out over the internet, they were gonna charge me $175 for shipping. So I emailed them asking them exactly what the, the shipping cost is gonna be. And Sarah there emailed me back within, man, it was like 10 o'clock at night, her time, or East Coast time. And she said, let me know what you want and uh, she said that shipping would most likely be much cheaper than 175 bucks so she ordered everything I needed and all this stuff was a whole 35 bucks FedEx ground shipping they shipped it Tuesday and it got here today Thursday so there's our part all cover all PVA film I'm assuming this is the laminating resin I ordered. I got a whole, I got three gallons of it. They didn't offer it for five gallon tubs. So I kind of had to just go with what they could get. Uh, this is Adtex EL301. That box took a beating on the way here. But uh, it's a laminating resin. I think it's like a 20 or 30 minute pot life. It's what they recommend for their surface coat. So we got a whole good three gallons of that. It'd much nicer if they had it in five gallon pails, but oh well. And for surface cooling coat, you no, know, Bob used the white resin. He had some, I spoke with him on the phone a few nights ago. He had some good things about it and some bad things. Uh, this stuff is actually a tooling resin and not just a, a slightly thicker white resin. It's only got a 20 minute pot life, so you gotta work really quickly. But you can shake this stuff and it doesn't really move all that all that much. Um, again, it's a tooling resin, so it should have, it's got really good chip resistance and everything so hopefully the, the molds will last a long time. Mold wax should be enough for a lot of airplanes. And another gallon of tooling resin. Like I said, the people there, the engineering guy gave me awesome prices on this stuff. Um, shipping was cheap for 75 pounds worth of resin and mold release stuff. Can't complain at all and super nice people they were very helpful saying if there's anything else give them uh just let them know what you wanted and if they could get it they would get it for you this stuff they don't keep on the shelf except for the the ad tech 201 es 201 pc which is their tooling resin that's the only thing they keep in stock the laminating stuff they don't because they don't sell it that often but again these are what ad tech recommend to use with each other so all i gotta do is next time i need some just let them know how much and where that I want it and they said they get it for me and let me know how much again super nice people prices are awesome you can order right off the website they've got everything from body casting to epoxy resin to tooling board fiberglass cloth vacuum bag supplies prices are reasonably cheap they're 
about on par with most everybody on things like vacuum bag equipment and all that. But uh, some of their stuff's a little bit cheaper. So coming back over here to the uh, F14 stab, it should be dried by now. We're pretty dang close. Yep. Feel like it's there. So take that tape off. And this blue masking tape is going to leave a little bit of a texture to the back side. Pop that. Again, here we've got the stabilizer. It's still a little soft and tacky, which is better than letting it fully cure because then it's really hard to get off. But again, you can see, it's got other than the, the texture from the masking tape, it actually did a really good job. There's actually <laughs> one of the panel lines where it sticks up a little bit more. It actually even got that in there. Need a little bit more body filler here and there at the tip. And this area here is just going to get blended in because it actually doesn't, it kind of flares away from the fuselage. But uh, yeah, that's how you get really tight fitting control surfaces of fuselages. I mean, you can use this for panels, hatches. You can use that technique for just about anything. So I'll uh, finish these up, shoot some primer. I got a little spinner I got to mold this weekend for the F-14, or not the F-14, but my Falk Wolf. And I've got a few other test layups to do to make sure I don't get any print through from the, old, from the mold because well, I've got some really heavy cloth, which is, well, right there in the U-Haul box, 800 square feet of 28 ounce cloth, which should be enough to do this entire airplane and still have some left over. So, uh, yeah, that's the F-14. And until the next video, you guys have a good week and stay safe.